Welcome back to Block TV. Now, blockchain technology has promised the world an interesting opportunity. Truly decentralized platforms that could be sensorless, at least until now. Joining us today is Director Brian of London. Brian, thanks for joining us. And you're going to tell us about what's going on between Steam, Justin Sun, and Hive. But first, give us some background uh, into this story. First, what is Steam for those who are just hearing about it uh, through this Justin Sun controversy? Okay. Steam was set up to be a social media-based blockchain system. So think of Facebook. Facebook's a big centralized database of everything that you write. Steam was set up to be a decentralized database into which social uh, media and social interactions can be put. But because it's decentralized, there is no central controlling authority, nobody that can take away your account. And in fact, the reason I came to be using Steam was uh, about a year ago, Facebook took away my account one night. I'd helped build a community to a million followers, but it was deemed politically uh, necessary to destroy that community, and my account was taken with it. So I found Steam because I understood that once I'd opened an account on Steam, it was mine. I held the keys. Nobody could take it away from me, or, or so I thought. Um, and Steam is the name of a blockchain, but Steam was started by a company called Steamit. Uh, and that Steamit Inc., uh, which dates from about 2016, um, that company was bought on February the 14th this year by Justin Sun of Tron. Mm -hmm. Now, Justin Sun was able to actually buy that company, but if it's decentralized, how was he able to take control of a decentralized system? This is, this is where, where the story gets very interesting. So there had been, back, back in the creation of Steam, uh, at the very, very beginning, um, it was a proof of work blockchain. And uh, Steamit Inc. had ninja mined 80% of the token. Uh, and then they'd opened it up uh, and others had joined in. Um, and then it had switched from, from this um, proof of work to a delegated proof of stake blockchain. And I mean, the technicalities are, are something I discovered long after I joined it. I joined it just because it was kind of like Facebook and I could blog on it and I was getting rewards. I was getting small amounts of, of upvotes that turned into real money via the, the Steam token. So. Back in 2016, they created it. They had 80% of the tokens were owned by this company, Steemit. And Steemit made these promises, uh, both on the blockchain and in interviews and so forth, that that ninja mind state would be used going forward to develop the software, to, to, to you know, add features and so on and, and push the project forward. And to some extent, for some of the time, they did do that. Um, but they had developed into a sort of a, they, they, they never really did the big launch thing. They never did like EOS or, or Tron and raised, you know, vast amounts in an ICO. So the company was sort of never all that well funded. And over the last couple of years that I've been using Steam, what was happening was that Steamit Inc. had been steadily selling Steam into the market that they owe this, this based on this original, original ninja mine stake. They've been steadily selling it, which had depressed the price, uh, was, was one of the many factors depressing the price. You know, once, you know, once we got into the whole crypto winter of 2018. Yeah, but Brian, were, were they, were they selling this steam? Were they selling this for de developmental purposes? Were they v selling this to raise money or, were, or as an exit? No, they were, not exiting, um, the, 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 one of the two people who'd founded it, Ned, uh, um, Ned was still in the company and he was paying employees uh, with this. And they were, and they were developing, they, they had a, a, promised, a promise of a feature um, of doing smart media tokens on the chain. They were also developing a communities function. They were doing development on the chain and that was being funded via sales of these tokens on the ninja mind stake and the community generally accepted that but this is the one thing that that all through that time the steam network like any blockchain 
it's a shared use of computer resources. And who was providing all the computer resources? Well, these were community witnesses. And, and Steam, unlike, uh, unlike proof of work blockchains, Steam was handing out the inflation to the witnesses who are running the nodes that keep everything going, to creators who posted their content, and to curators who found content that they liked. So there was this ebb and flow of, of rewards going to, you know, I would post a video and it would get upvotes. And if it got upvotes, especially from people who had a large stake in Steam, I would make reasonable money on my videos and my other text posts. So you, you know, you, in a you, way you, that you, you can't yeah, do on Brian, Facebook. You'd say, you would say up until this point, up until the start of the takeover, would you say Steam was working quite well? That you said, you know, you as a content maker was happy getting reward for your content. Uh, the, the community was happy receiving content. All in all, you think it was it was running well. It wasn't the biggest uh, blockchain platform out there. It, it was actually, you know, well loved by the community. I would say exactly that. It had been through even even in the, the year year and a half or so that I was on it up until that point. It went through a couple of uh, hard forks that I think improved the content that was on the, the, the system and improved the way things were rewarded. They changed the reward balance from 75 to, to authors to 75% and 25% to 50-50. You know, they made changes that were contentious, but, but each time a, a change like that was made, it was argued about ferociously in the community. And then the community would decide by voting for witnesses. And the way that the system works is that, that there's a top, uh, 20 of witnesses, 19 of whom are, uh, are uh, uh, sorry, a top 20 of witnesses, and then a 21st witness that rotates in. And the position of those witnesses is decided by votes. And you get more vote if you have more stakes. So the more, the more money you have invested in the Steam system, whether you earned that or you bought tokens on the open market, means the power of your vote. So, so it's which. a proof of stake system with and the top 20, top 20 stakers being the decision makers. No, it's not the top 20 stakers. It's, it's much wider than 20 stakers, but it's top 20 witnesses. And what you need to do a hard fork, which is necessary to make significant changes to the code, you need 17 of those witnesses all to start running the code. And then the fork will go through. And there are various other things, but what, what actually happened, if we sort of jump back to the story of, of what happened when Justin Sun bought Steemit Inc., the company, he came out with lots of statements. And, and I mean, he's, he's, he's a bit wild on social media. I mean, he, he, what we discovered as a community was that he really doesn't seem to know a very great deal about the underlying technology of certainly Steam, Steemit, and and this delegated proof of stake blockchain that he'd now bought a large part of. Because at the time that he bought Steemit Inc., Steemit Inc. still holds 20% of the entire uh, of the entire pool of steam that exists. And that, and that steam had never been used to choose which witnesses were running the network. It had never taken part ever in, uh, in choosing witnesses and choosing the direction of the blockchain. It had always been consensus of them without that huge state. As soon as Justin bought it though, people got worried. And, and, it, and it was either a coincidence or a very, very poor timing that I think within a week of, of February the 14th, he used a similar big, huge pile of Tron that he hold to overrule on the Tron network and basically push through a change that he wanted made using, again, another huge ninja mine stake that nobody had a chance to compete with. And, mm -hmm. and this scared a lot of people, especially the witnesses on this delegated proof of stake. Blockchain. Right, but, but at, at this point, you're saying that, 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 that Justin Sun has about 20 or, or bought about 20% of the total steam circulation. How does that enable him then to take over uh, the blockchain, essentially? Well, this was, this was the interesting point was that it didn't. Um, what, a, what? As soon as he had done this move on, tr on the Tron side, the witnesses got together and in a fairly contentious move, but that was 
widely supported by the community with a few dissenting voices. What they did was they made a soft fork, um, one that didn't need uh, a, a massive change to the code base. It, it, it sort of activated some dormant parts of the code that allowed them to say, hey, we're just going to, this, this, this ninja mind state, we're going to block some of the transactions that it would need to do in order to exit or to vote. And it was a temporary, it was a very temporary thing. As I say, it was not a hard fork, it was a soft fork. Uh, and it was called 22.2, .2, it was contentious. Uh, and people, certainly at least um, two of the main witnesses disagreed at the time with running it, and they didn't. But enough of the witnesses, the community witnesses did, and it was run. And this sort of led to <laughs> escalation. And uh, after yeah. sort of... And, I think, and, 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 and public, at this point, the community has essentially uh, voted together against the idea of uh, Justin Sun taking control of the Steam blockchain. Yeah, they did not delete tokens. They did not change balances. Nothing like that happened. The only thing that happened was that uh, transactions that would allow him to vote for witnesses and some transactions, some transfer transactions that would start the process of him being able to, you know, basically dump and, and do what we, what the Steam community would consider to be an exit scam, um, those transactions were temporarily blocked. Um, and he didn't like that. Uh, it took a few days, but then what he did was he either, he, he convinced... Uh, three big exchanges, uh, Wabe, Polynex, and Binance, is the, probably the biggest and most well-known, to use customer funds to vote for witnesses. Now, uh, one part of this, the, the way Steam works, is that you can only vote if you have done something called powering up your Steam. Uh, and powering up means locking it. It's, it's the same as staking on other blockchains. Um, but the rules of powering up are that once you've powered up, you can vote. Uh, your, your votes for content carry more weight and, and are worth more money from the reward pool. But the, but the flip side is that it takes 13 weeks to power down. And, and once you initiate a power down process, you wait a, an entire week and then you get one thirteenth of your stake back. So now, when, when, he he did, when he did this, did, 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 did the exchanges have permission from the users that they were holding the funds for to actually stake their funds, to actually vote with their funds, or, uh, you know, or, or did they just do this on their own? They did it on their own. They had absolutely no permission. They had never asked. It had never been considered even that an exchange would do this. And to have three major exchanges do this was, was something, you know, out totally and utterly out of the ordinary. And not only did these exchanges vote, Justin promised them that he would change the rules then and they would be able to get back their stake after three days. They would, they would change the power down period from 13 weeks uh, to three days. Now, I'm not the world's most technical user of Steam, but I already know that the entire economic of Steam and the whole way that the blogging platform works, the whole reward system would be utterly destroyed by a three day power down. Now, you know, for months, we've been having this community discussion whether the power down should be chopped from 13 weeks to four weeks, uh, you know, and that that was a massively contentious move uh, and hadn't been decided on one way or the other. But 13 weeks to three days, unthinkable. It can't work. And this is apparently what Justin Sun said to the exchanges. Oh, don't worry, you'll get all your customers funds back in three days, because once I've got the control of the witnesses, I'll just run a hard fork and and change the rule. Mm. This um, now this seems this, this this occurrence seems like so antithetical to 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 the entire cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, ecosystem where it's supposed to be decentralized. You have users who are owning cryptocurrency uh, in the hands of the, these exchanges, and these exchanges have now taken it away from them, and now they're locked for 13 weeks. Uh, without the permission, voting without the permission, uh, and now also relieving them of these funds for up to 13 weeks. Has there been any backlash by the users and by the community uh, against these exchanges? There was a huge backlash. There was a lot of noise on Twitter, such that, you know, you know, Justin Sun's got 
two million followers or something on, on Twitter. But it's quite clear if you interact with him, uh, as I did at the time, um, that they're all bots, or there's a large component that are bots, and that um, essentially what, Tron, what Justin did was he personally blocked almost all the significant Steam people replying to him in his, in his mentions after a while. Um, Binance came in for a huge amount of pressure and they, they relented and unvoted uh, and eventually started the power down procedure. But customers of Binance who held Steam on Binance are still have, have had huge problems getting their stake out um, because there was literally no mechanical way to give enough Steam to Binance that they could fulfill customer uh, requests. They seem to have been able to give Steam to Justin Sun, but not all their customers got funds out when they asked for them. Um, and and Binance, for example, were, were giving their, their support people, were, were giving essentially erroneous answers. When, when people asked, why can't I get my Steam? They were told that it was to do with maintenance on the Steam blockchain. Well, no, I've been able to transfer Steam in and out of Bittrex, for example, um, at will, throughout this entire period because Bittrex never voted and never locked up its stake. Um, so yes, there was a huge backlash. Um, Poloniex also apologized um, and took away their votes. But in the meantime, what this did was Justin put up, uh, and we're pretty sure it's Justin and we're pretty sure it's Steam it Inc. They put up 20, or in fact, I think that at one time they had 30 witnesses, maybe even all running on the same machine um, that that were running the entire blockchain. So no community consensus, complete centralization, complete control, resting in the hands of essentially one corporation or one individual even. Uh, and that's, as you say, totally antithetical to the decentralized system. Mm -hmm. and uh, now, and once he had this control, even, now, once Justin and Steam you know, uh, took this control of the blockchain, did they make any changes on the blockchain? Were they censoring? Uh, did, did they actually use their power for anything or, or, or did the community uh, take control before they could cause any damage? Well, um, at first they didn't. And what happened was it went into about a two or three week, um, uh, it, a two or three week standoff, uh, like a Mexican standoff. What happened was the community rallied together um, behind the old existing real community witnesses. And this, this is the thing about Steam is because because there's a social media element to it, we actually know the person. We might not know the real identities because this is crypto and people, you know, go by pseudonyms sometimes. But we know the identity. We know the the personas, the people behind running real witnesses. Whereas all of um, Justin's witnesses were just fake, weird, made-up names with no posts that had never said anything. We knew who these real community was, and and the amount of voting in the system jumped to an incredible degree because people had been joining Steam for years who just wanted to blog or, or you know, put up cooking recipes or write travel blogs or do videos. They didn't really understand this voting system and many of them had never voted, but there was a massive get out the vote push that got to us back to a point where we had 10 community witnesses and 10 sort of fake Justin witnesses in the top 20. Now, that wasn't enough for a fork, it wasn't enough for him to change anything, it wasn't enough for the community witnesses to change anything with his state. Mexican um, standoff, if you will. Total Mexican standoff. And in fact, it, it turned out that, you know, there were people still on the fence, you know, because Tron and Justin Steam at, at first, we thought, you know, he's going to come and he's going to do his marketing thing and it will drive up the price of Steam. And, and at this time, actually, the price of Steam did go up. Um, but what, what one found is that the community are not really there for the price of Steam. They're there because they've got a home on the web and they've got community and people with whom they've been interacting sometimes for up to four years. And that's their home on the web. And the idea that Justin had come along and, and, and it looked like it was in danger that got everybody rallying together. And this, it proved to a certain extent that uh, the weakness of distributed First of, all, uh, I want of, you... of this DPoS system, but it also proved the strength of it when there is a way to rally a community. So I'd be really 
I'd be really worried, for example, about delegated proof of stake being susceptible to just basically a financial attack like this, if there was no community around it to rally the troops, to, to fend off some kind of attack like this. So if we just move, we, we can move forward to, eventually this standoff couldn't continue for, for forever. And what the witnesses did, the old consensus community witnesses did, was they developed the code for a true hard fork. And this, this is what happened two weeks ago on Friday. Um, and that was the creation of the new blockchain called Hi, which is a totally community uh, led. Now, what you're, what you're showing on the screen there is, um, is <laughs> the, the sort of the anti post for Hi. This is what happened with the start of Hi was that Hi immediately started from steam it took the entire history of steam it copied it up it across and it airdropped a brand new token a totally new token that had you know no intrinsic value uh, prior to the creation of this blockchain it airdropped it in exact proportion to every holder of steam except and this is where it got contentious except the ninja mind stake of steam it and various other large holders who had voted for and actively helped justin sun in this basically what what was to use a technical term a sybil attack on the existing steam chain they did not get new hype they had all their steam nothing was done to the steam blockchain because steam blockchain is currently still being run by a collection of witnesses most of whom seem to be directly controlled by Justin Sun. And there are now a, a small number of uh, witnesses who Justin Sun seems to have bribed into coming back into the network or coming now, onto Brian, the network. Brian, it, it, it's quite funny because, you know, if we go all the way back to this, this whole thing started, you only got to Steam because you were, you were kicked off of Facebook. Now, if you look back at the founding story of Facebook, it's a very similar story how Mark Zuckerberg actually took more control of the company is where he pretty much opened up a new company, bought all of Facebook stock, uh, and diluted and left out all the, you know, the other founders. That's the, if you look at the movie The Social Network, this is a similar story happening in this new social media world. Uh, now, this new hive, is, is the community behind it? You said this is contentious moves. Is the community, the, the Steam it community, are they behind Hive? Uh, and, and how is Hive going so far? I immediately, uh, on launch, um, Hive very quickly got listed on some of the big exchanges. Bittrex listed Hive almost immediately. And in fact, it, it, it participated in the airdrop because you know I had a, I had a thousand uh, Steam on Bittrex at the time of the airdrop. Within two days, Bittrex gave me access to 1,000 Hive that I had been airdropped. Um, and the price of Hive initially outperformed Steam. So from almost from the very beginning, um, Hive was worth more than Steam. And that, you know, in these days of uh, quantitative easing, that was that's almost like a doubling of your money because, you know, for the vast majority of us, we held Steam and suddenly we're given Hive. And, and what also happened very, very quickly, um, Steemit, the front end, started censoring things it didn't like. They came out with a very bizarre post and they said, we can't allow any material on our social platform that promotes another social platform. They, in effect, if you, if you wrote a post that says, I'm actually now moving and most of my content will appear on Hive, uh, some of the biggest um, most well-known names on Steam who wrote that got censored, directly censored. And in fact, you know, we can go on to GitHub and look at the list of, of actual posts and people that they were suddenly censoring from the front end. Now, it didn't stop their work going into the blockchain because the blockchain is the underlying database. And if you know where to look, you can go and find a blog post, for example but it doesn't appear on the Steam it front end. And then they, they went even further and they started blocking things from the one and only API that is remaining. I mean, again, don't wanna get sort of too technical, but essentially they use the only method of censorship that can really work. And, and this is 
unthinkable. And so any people who had been fence sitting about the creation of Hive, and there were a few people who thought that it was a bit too far and that, you know, we really should be still trying to work with Justin Sun some more. Those few fence sitters immediately, when they saw actual censorship happening on Steemit Inc. and, and Steemit.com, the, 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 the most significant front end, they jump ship and they've all come to Hive. And most of the most significant uh, apps have either moved or moved already or are in the process of moving because yeah. most of the numbers I, most them. of the numbers I've seen are uh, put at over 50% of the active dApps on the Steam already on Hive and active there yeah. as well. So it, the price wise, it seems to be thriving and even activity wise, uh, it seems to be thriving. Is, is this a win? Is this, is, is this story, the story of Justin Sun, Steam and Hive, is this the greatest success story of proof of stake blockchains or the biggest failure of proof of stake blockchains? Uh, which one is it? It's both. It's absolutely both because it's, it's, it's the proof that delegated proof of stake can be this, this Byzantine fault tolerant resistant thing when it's attacked. Uh, so, you know, it, it takes the attack, it takes that initial loss and failure, that, that loss of control and, and that failure to prevent the initial attack to prove that all of the systems necessary to go on to defeat it exist within certainly this delegated proof of stake system. And already, you know, the, the next, you know, the, the, the thing that's come, currently happening on Hive is that there, there, there do need to be some fixes to who got the air dropped. There were some mistakes made. There'll be some, some, uh, some people who didn't get Hive that will get Hive. But the next changes are also looking at around uh, how can we more, uh, more totally secure Hive against uh, this kind of attack in the future, but but merely taking out that twenty percent ninja mind stake, that goes a huge way because that stops that stops anybody in the future coming along. You know, if you want to come along now and buy high, you're going to have to buy a vast amount of high on the open network, which is definitely going to drive the price up. There is no large unused pot of high that anybody can buy in an under the table deal in the way that Justin Sun bought from Steemit. That, that doesn't exist now. And that makes, that makes Hive much safer to it. And it means that we, we, the community, you know, I don't have a huge stake in, in Hive, but my stake is big enough that if a thousand or 2000 or 3000 people like me, decide to unvote a witness. That, that witness drops straight out of consensus. It's, it's, it's very easy to see how we have a stake. And mm -hmm. so it means that I know I've got a reasonable share in the infrastructure that holds my blogging content and that nobody can censor me without a, a, you know, a large consensus amongst people I vote for. It's, Ryan, me, and that's and it that's really the beauty, is proof that this and that's worked. the beauty of the blockchain. I mean, it's, it just goes you. I think you to, I agree with you here that it is both a success story and a failure. A failure that that lesson learned. You know, like you said, if if they, if you know proof of of, uh, of stake systems going forwards, learn the lesson to kind of block up these security holes. Uh, it, it has proven itself through this. Uh, you know, through this let's say, a uh, hostile takeover to be quite uh, resilient with a strong enough community. That's the power of the community, the power of the blockchain. Thank you so much, Brian of London, for breaking that down. Really wild story, and I think not getting reported upon in the crypto sphere enough, uh, especially with the implications of exchanges uh, going against customers' wishes, doing iffy things, Justin Sun taking over blockchains, very interesting stuff. Thank you, Brian London, so much for dropping by and spilling all the beans, and for all of those of you at home who want more on blockchain tech and cryptocurrency news, make sure to check us out at blocktv.com. Watch us on Amazon Fire TV and Roku.